Hey, happy, happy, beautiful day. Dr. Bob Burkowski here, and this one goes out to my friends in Australia who requested a little video on inflammation and body composition. So this guy actually, I did a little internet search and he wrote a blog about 10 ways to get fat. And interestingly enough, they were all ways that increase inflammation. So a little disclaimer here. Uh, we could create easily a doctoral thesis, if not a library, about how inflammation affects body composition. Reality is we want some inflammation. The only way we have no inflammation is if we have no repair going on, and that's if we're dead. But too much inflammation clearly moves our body composition in the wrong direction. And when you're holding extra body fat, and this guy started out at 524 pounds when he started his blog, uh, that's creating a whole lot of inflammation. So inflammation literally means fire within. We want a fire within, but we want a fire that's just enough at the right amount of time in the right spot. Obesity creates inflammation everywhere and it burns us up, it burns us out, and it is the top risk factor for death of nearly all causes. Number two risk factor for cancer. Definitely distorts the autoimmune system, creates an, uh, an increase in stress hormones, which will decrease our sex hormones, decrease our anabolic hormones, those being good anabolic hormones. Uh, number of things that just aren't gonna be very, very fun. So, first question, do we burn fat? Of course we do. Uh, we burn it, within something called the mitochondria. So crazy enough, fats are stored in long chains in our body. They have to get broken down into medium and short chain triglycerides to get into mitochondria to burn. Uh, and that requires something called peroxisomes to do that, which by the way, are inhibited by inflammatory process and more specifically by the cortisol response to the inflammation. So as we burn the fat, we need little kindling. We burn them in the mitochondria. There's actually 22 different nutrition steps, steps of the electron transport chain to make the energy. And each one of those requires a nutrition cofactor. So guess what? We need to have good nutrition. Uh, what about things like toxicity? Here's a simple quote from the literature. All toxins inhibit mitochondrial function. Therefore, they decrease fat burning but inflammation is caused by trauma, maybe too much exercise, toxicity, breathing even the air in my beautiful home, and nutrient insufficiency. And those things are rampant in our society. So let's go back to this mitochondria and how they actually work. Well, we can train our mitochondria, use it or lose it, with good exercise. We know that elite athletes have about 600% more mitochondrial efficiency highly, highly significant. And it's not just the mitochondria in their muscles, it turns out to be in their brain as well. So they will have better decision-making factors. So back to this concept of inflammation, how do you get too much? I mentioned trauma, toxicity, nutrient insufficiency, but how about an inflammatory lifestyle? So I've described the Magnificent Seven. You've got to eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, talk right every day. What's the opposite of that? What most people do, they eat wrong. What's wrong? Processed foods, too much of them. Drink wrong. Foods, liquids should not have calories, at least in a general perfect world, right? So we want to drink a whole lot more water, coffee, teas. Those are actually shown to have Nutrition benefit, coffee and tea, the right kind, is actually nutritious water. Think right, manage your stress, meditate on a daily basis. Move right, the right amount that keeps you happy, keeps you fit, keeps you healthy, but not over inflamed. Sleep right, tough one for a lot of people, myself included. I need to budget a lot of time to get good sleep, but reality is we should go to sleep, fall asleep deep without uh, any type of major effort there, sleep straight through the night, wake up refreshed without an alarm. Uh, poop right, <laughs> that's gonna be the detoxify thing, but you'd be surprised how few people actually poop right one to two times a day, formed without much effort or needing anything else to enhance the process. And finally, talk right, not just the conversation that you have with yourself and those around you, but the conversation that our cells have with one another. So we've all heard of endocrine communication. That's a broadcast message in our body. There's paracrine communication, cells talking to each other. And there's autocrine communication, the cells talking to themselves. 
too much inflammation interferes with the communication process as well as all the others. So here's the long and short of it. How does inflammation affect body composition? Negatively. Too much of it is a really bad deal. Breaks down lean, increases fat. I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski, knowing that we can all be happy, healthy, and successful.